Welcome back to the Saffron Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be going over the app we've been developing. We're going to go through a couple questions that we made and kind of discuss our thoughts on it. Mom, you want to start us off? Can you tell us why we're moving to the app next? Yeah, so we are planning on a couple different things that we want to do in the immediate future. The two big things that I think are important for the product is a clipper and an app. So a clipper means being able to go to other websites and easily uh, import the content into Saffron. And that and the app seemed like a good direction to go next. The clipper because it'll help people add their recipes to Saffron and kind of build their collection. And then the app I feel like is really helpful uh, because you can be able to access your recipes from your phone. And th the way we're going to be doing this is it's built in React Native. So both whether you have an iOS app or phone, I mean, or a Android phone, you're going to be able to use it and access your recipes anywhere. And I think that's really helpful, especially in the kitchen. You might not have uh, or want to have your computer there. You might just want to pull up the recipe on your phone and cook from that. So I felt like this was a great start and then thinking of doing the clipper very soon after this. Do you know what percentage of your users would be using a mobile versus the web? Uh, like how, what percentage of those users? Well, all of our users are going to have to use both, right? So what we're planning on doing with the app is it doesn't make a lot of sense to enter an entire recipe in the app. At least that's our hypothesis. We're not sure if people are going to want to uh, enter the entire recipes through the app. So we actually didn't even add the ability to do that right now. So right now the app is mostly kind of a way to view all your recipes. So we see it right now, and this is going to expand in the future, but we see it right now as you enter your recipes through the website, and then you have the option of viewing your recipes either same on the website or through the app. As far as percent users, I feel like all the users will have an, a phone that could possibly download Saffron. So if you're using Saffron, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to download the app. Um, so I would say a high percentage of users will want to use the app. Uh, but I guess we'll see. And maybe some users are going to just prefer to use it on the desktop, and that's totally fine. But I think a good amount of users are going to want to be able to uh, view it on their phone, show it to other people on their phone, and they have their phone wherever they go. So they'll now be able to access their recipes anywhere, which I think is a big plus. As a cook, I know that I like using Saffron for different things. For example, I love to enter the recipes uh, from the website because I've got extra room to spread out and to, to add things and look at things and to make up my mind what I'm going to do. But then after that, I like using uh, the phone for quick viewing, uh, pulling a recipe up in the kitchen if I want to see what ingredients are in something. Um, also, uh, we're eventually going to be having uh, grocery shopping, uh, a grocery list that you will definitely want to use on a mobile device. So um, both Ben and I have been looking at Saffron as really not being used from one device, that it'll be used, used across several devices, maybe um, an iPad or a, a laptop or um, you know, desktop, so there's, and the mobile. So I think we're trying to make the best experience on each device, and the phone will have certain limitations because of the size of it. And um, in talking about going to the mobile device, Ben, do you want to share your development process from taking it from the web to porting it over to the mobile? Was that a big undertaking? Uh, so actually setting it up wasn't too bad. So if you watch my other videos, I basically took a similar technique that I used in the Airbnb clone that I did. So in that project, basically what happens is I can share a lot of the code between the app and the website. So I'm using React on the website and I use React Native to build this app. And you're able to see it right here. Here's the app if you're watching this. And here I have it on the iOS emulator right now. Um, and basically what happens is the server code uh, is going to be a single server or later as I scale it, more servers. But that's going to be able to handle both the app and the website as well. And then to share code between them, basically all the logic to make calls, to log in, to grab the recipes, 
Um, all that stuff I already have. I'm using GraphQL for that. So I'm able to reuse that. And the big thing that goes on with the app is actually just building a new UI. So the main work with the building the app here is actually setting up everything uh, visually. So and trying to uh, get get the way that we want it and styling in that. So a lot of the logic part is able to be used from the website. So most of it, and so because of that, it actually doesn't take too long to set up the app. And actually that's one reason why we ended up doing the app first is actually we had a lot of it built and it didn't take too long to actually just set up kind of the UI of it. Did you, um, on the testing and the prototyping, um, I really liked being able to, to test it on my phone and I could get a real feel for how the flow and everything worked. But did you talk about uh, what um, mobile devices this is going to be initially available on? Yeah, it's going to work on both iOS and Android because React Native allows us to port to both. And so we're, we're going to be supporting both. Okay. And were there any limitations um, on the app versus the web? Are we Is is the user going to have a pretty full experience on both devices? I mean, on, yes, on both devices. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to be able to, so for example, the page you're looking at now is the search, and you're going to be able to find all your recipes this way, and this search has the same capabilities as the search on the website, and uh, pretty much we have, like, for example, and we'll, we'll get to this probably in a little bit, there's some things that are different between the app and the website, but for the most part, the app is, a, you can use, pretty much, I see the app as something you can totally use after you have set up all your recipes and you can be happy viewing it. And I think it, uh, you can do almost everything. We wanna set it up to where you can do most things, either all on the app or all on the website. And then the few things that you can't uh, make it specific to, it makes sense for it to happen on the website or it makes sense to happen on the app. And, those things make platform specific. How would a clipper work on the phone or would it work on the phone? I know um, the clipper that you developed for the web was based on the Chrome browser and going to the extension store and adding it there and then using the Chrome browser to find a blog site or a recipe and then, then to click and port it into Saffron. Is there any kind of similar experience that can be had on the phone or is it are we just limited to getting the recipe on the phone from say uh, websites or social media platforms um, okay so basically there's two different ways we can go about doing that uh, on the phone there is uh, the first way is just by a URL so for example um, I can take the URL of a website that I want or that I there's a recipe on and uh, we don't have this right now but we could set it up to the point where we basically insert the recipe or not the recipe but the URL in the app and then what's going to happen is Saffron will fetch the recipe from that URL because basically that's all it is and that's basically what happens on the extension except the extension knows what the URL is um, because you're, you you have that, that's one of the features of having a Chrome extension is it knows what page you're on. Um, the other way is, let's say I have a uh, something up, for example, Instagram, or I'm on Pinterest, or maybe I'm on a website. A lot of those sites have what's called a share to button. And so you can use that share to button and be able to share it to Saffron. Um, so this is something that I need to research the feasibility of because I'm not sure exactly what data it sends me. Um, but basically what, what the ideal situation is, let's say I'm on an Instagram post. Um, I click share to and it sends Saffron both the image and the caption. And so then I can analyze the caption for, for example, ingredients or uh, the name of the recipe and grab the image. And then you can then tweak it from there if we didn't parse everything correctly. But those are kind of the directions that we can go with the app if we want to do some kind of clipping functionality with it. For me, the um, this second flow seems more natural than using a URL on the mobile device because I'm typically either in an email and getting a newsletter uh, about a recipe that on a mailing that I'm on a mailing list for, 
or if I'm on Instagram, I'll see a recipe. Um, and I want to be able to bookmark or save that or bring it in immediately to Saffron if I can um, because I don't want to forget it. And sometimes you get busy looking at a bunch of things and it's nice to know if, you, if there's a way to, again, save it or get it into Saffron then so that you can actually see it in your cookbook or see it in Saffron and add it to a cookbook at a, mm -hmm. later, at a later point. Well, think about what you said there. You said bookmark. So if you're bookmarking something, you may, I mean, sometimes it's going to be an Instagram post or something, but sometimes you're, what you're really bookmarking is a URL. So the URL, maybe there's a way for it to actually send the URL to Saffron, and then we can do the same thing where it parses or it goes to the URL and grabs the recipe from there. Um, and that can be the way that we, we do it. I mean, the, the other thing is, I don't think it may, maybe it makes sense to have some kind of bookmarking feature inside of Saffron where you can be like, I want to add this recipe later. Um, but I don't see that something we do anytime soon, at least. Well, the, um, the first direction when you had to type in the URL, most of the URLs for these recipes are quite long and cumbersome. So it's really difficult I mean, I don't see any people actually typing it. They're going to copy-paste it. Right, but um, it's not easy with a long URL to be switching back and forth and being able to use a share button at yeah, the bottom or something like that, I think, would be easier for the user. Yeah, I mean, definitely share is probably easier for the user or simpler for the user, um, but it's definitely more complex to make. And the URL is basically uses functionality that we already have. So, and I think some people may like just using the URL. So that's something where we can have the URL, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. But I think it's nice to have in case people want to just use it that way. So will this mobile app um, have the same features as our MVP that we rolled out a couple weeks ago? So are you asking if there's like any other features that we didn't have on the MVP on the phone? Um, I just, I guess, want to make sure we're going to have exactly what we had on the MVP for the website. Well, I guess we can talk about what we're going to have on the app then. So we're currently looking at the search page. So we already have a search up here called chicken. Um, so we can click on or we can scroll through all of our chicken recipes and we can click on one that we like. And when we click on one that we like, from here we can see all the information for this recipe. So for example, here's Chinese chicken salad, and this is basically what we call the introduction one. And then you can flip between both your ingredients and your instructions. Um, so you can access your entire recipe here. Um, and that's kind of an interesting thing we haven't talked about yet, is we chose to kind of have tabs at the top instead of having a long scroll. Uh, so the reason why we did that was, we find that a lot of times you actually swap between the ingredients and the instructions and it's kind of easier to just be able to tab back and forth rather than having to scroll down and scroll back and forth between them. So that's something we tried out. We'll see how this ends up being uh, and if people end up liking that better than having like a long scroll and having the instructions and the, the ingredients below. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to search, find your recipes. One thing we don't have on the website that we put in the app um, which we might end up adding to the website as well as what we call recent recipes. So these are some recipes that I've added. I have some test data in there now, but we can go ahead and click on these recipes and we can see what's going on here. Um, uh, we also have the be able to look through your cookbooks. So here I can look through the cookbook and I can pick main and I can see all the recipes that I have in this cookbook and I can pick whichever one that I want uh, like that and it takes you to your recipe. The other thing um, is recipe links. I actually just did this today. So let's search one that has a link. So if I click on Hunan pork and click on the ingredients, here's a link to another recipe. I can click on that and it'll actually take us to this Hunan recipe over here. And then if I want, I can go back and I'm now on the uh, search and you know you can just go back and forth between uh, everything. So that's pretty much the features of the app that's gonna be the start. So you're basically gonna be able to have all the options of viewing your recipe. So you'll notice we don't have anything to edit your recipes or to create your recipes right now because uh, we felt like it's going to be kind of cumbersome to try to do that on the phone. I do think possibly editing makes sense because a lot of times if I'm in a recipe 
and I'm cooking with it and then I'm like, oh, I see a typo. I kind of want to just go in there real quick and fix that typo. So I see editing being something we might add to the phone as well. But anyway, that is the features we're going to start off with. Uh, the recipe linking is actually very powerful. Um, there's a lot of recipes that build on a base set of ingredients. For example, if you were going to make pizza, you might have pizza dough, um, and you might have a margarita pizza, you might have different pizzas, and instead of writing out the ingredients for the dough every single time you had a pizza, being able to have a base dough ingredient and being able to quickly get in and out of that recipe not only makes your screens cleaner and easier to read but it also allows you to segregate the different steps of the recipe so you're doing handling all the dough requirements on the dough screen so I think users are going to really like that and I think when they get used to adding the links um, that that's going to be something that they'll enjoy uh, using um, Unfortunately, for the phone, you can't add the links again because we're not adding any recipes at this point. So this would all be done on the on the website and then just viewed um, on the phone. That's something we talked about also a while ago. Was so it's nice to kind of be able to flip through multiple um, recipes easily. So something we're thinking about adding as well is kind of what we call like a cooking view. In this cooking view, you could kind of pick a couple recipes because a lot of times. You might have a main dish, but you might also have a recipe for the side dish or something. So being able to have kind of a view where you can easily flip between multiple recipes that you're currently cooking um, and ma that makes sense, uh, something like that, and kind of optimize it for when you're actually cooking versus if you're just kind of viewing or finding recipes. So um, it looks like um, this app is pretty far along and then do you see the um, clipper as being the next priority or do you see it going to some of the other features on the website next? Um, I see the clipper being, uh, so there's a couple big things I would say. So I'd say the clipper is big um, and also the grocery list is big. And when I say grocery list, something we want to do is um, being able to take your ingredients here and add all these ingredients to a grocery list and then kind of organize them by aisles or organize them by ingredients, combine ingredients, kind of like a smart grocery list. So that's a bigger project. The clipper is also a bigger project. I would probably say it takes less time. So I see clipper possibly be something, um, but at some point I think we need to sit down and pick, like prioritize some of the things that we, uh, we want to do next because there's also a bunch of little things that don't take a lot of time, that add a lot of value. So for example, being able to scale a recipe. If right now this particular recipe makes two pizzas, all right, I wanna scale these ingredients so I can make 10 pizzas, and it automatically does that. Or if I wanna change the units, so going from metric uh, to regular, or back and forth, that sort of thing. So I think there's a lot of little features I have in mind that could possibly make sense doing first. Because one, they add a lot of value and are simpler to add uh, versus uh, some of the other bigger ones. You're talking from a development standpoint. Yes, all, all, all from a development point of view. Okay. But also something that, like, that's why we kind of need to make, we, we kind of need to sit down and make come, some kind of chart where basically we map how long it takes to program versus how much value does this add to the customer using it versus how much does this help us get new customers as well. Because it could be di there could be a difference between this helps existing customers versus this helps new customers or get new customers, right? So th that that sort of thing we need to sit down and do. But anyway, that's the app. We're working on this, and as you can see, we're pretty far along with the app. Uh, the plans for the new feature are to actually publish this to the Apple and Google Play Store. So that's going to be coming up soon. And that is it for this episode of the Saffron Podcast. Thanks for listening, guys.